Hey everybody, it is great to have you along here and um, we are going to talk about a topic that hopefully we'll be able to uh, bring people together today, <laughs> a universally loved uh, topic. Uh, we're going to talk about pizza and all things pizza, so hopefully uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Thanks for joining us here on um, uh, this, uh, I don't even know what day this is, Wednesday uh, morning. I'm Bill from BillOnTheRoad.com. It's good to have you with us. Uh, so we are going to join uh, a guy who is an expert in all things pizza. What a great life, what a great gig. Um, live from the great city of Chicago, and I only say that because baseball season is is not in progress, um, John. Uh, Jonathan Porter, he is the founder and the owner and the operator and the brains behind Chicago Pizza Tours. John, good to see you, sir. How are you? Hey, it's good to see you too, Bill. Thanks for having me on here. When, no, when was my the last time we, when you were working on the book, and wh how long ago was that? You know what? I don't remember. I know we had you on radio a few years ago, and I know I continue to follow you on social media. Um, I know you're on Instagram, and you're always posting pictures of, of you know, freshly baked pizza, and it's always at, at the worst times Perfect. when I'm starving, and I see these <laughs> great, uh, great photos. And um, but no, it's, it's great to have you with us. Uh, but before we kind of dive into the topic again, uh, pizza, uh, you would think a universally loved uh, topic that can hopefully uh, bring <laughs> bring folks together in these uh, trying times. But before we kind of dive into that, I want you to tell folks a little bit about uh, yourself uh, and how you started what is um, I just I think just a fantastic um, uh, idea, great, a great idea, taking people around Chicago and teaching them about uh, pizza and, and the history of pizza. So, so kind of give folks a little, little info on that. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you hit it right on the head. That, that's where it started. So we're a little over 10 years old now. We're going, it, we just turned 11, actually, um, uh, a couple days ago. And uh, the whole concept of this was to see Chicago one slice at a time. And Chicago, while we're known as the deep dish capital of the world, and that's true, uh, for the most part, the locals really only eat it on special occasion or when people from out of town are visiting us. You know, we grew up on what's called a tavern style thin crust pizza. Um, so I just thought it would be, you know, a, a phenomenal way to see the city um, to kind of design a tour based around our my, most iconic food. We're going to give people the deep dish, but we're actually going to show them what it's really like to uh, live in a city that takes its pizza really seriously. Um, and that's a great thing about Chicago is you've got a lot of these deep dish places downtown. Um, but we made it a bus driven tour. So we started out downtown at a, a, what we call a culturally significant pizzeria, something that has history to do with the, the deep dish pizza. Um, but we get on the bus and we, we head out there and we go see places that, you know, in the neighborhoods that are a little bit off the beaten path. So um, just figured we could design a, a really fun three to four hour tour uh, based on, you know, eating your way through Chicago and trying, um, you know, people always talk about, are these the best places in Chicago? Well, there's like 2,500 pizzerias. I, I, you know, best is a relative term. Right. Um, but these places, you know, it's a lot of different styles and you really start to get an understanding about pizza as a whole and how it's looked at in this city. Um, and it's just a, a fun little, uh, a fun way to spend uh, you know, an afternoon. We always, you know, thought, oh, we're gonna be getting people that are visiting from out of town, the, the tourists and all that. We, we weren't prepared for how many locals were going to be coming out and, and you know, taking these tours. Um, people just love pizza in this town, and, uh, and it really shows. Boy, I'm, I'm looking at some of the pieces that you're putting <laughs> up on the screen here. It's making me hungry now. And I remember these are my photos. <laughs> well, now you know what I go through when I see your pictures, uh, and I'm streaming through uh, Instagram or whatever. I, I see these great shots. So let, let me just ask you, since Deep Dish is such a – integral part of Chicago and Chicago's history. When people talk about pizza and Chicago, they immediately think of deep dish. So two questions that I, that I would have, um, and I'll ask them at the same time so you can answer both. So the first one, a deep dish, I've heard people say, isn't really a pizza, it's more of a like a casserole. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts okay. on that? And, and then the other, and I've heard this uh, from people who live in Chicago who will say, yeah, you know, we, we like deep dish, it's fine, but we don't really, 
eat it unless somebody's coming in from out of town and we're taking them yeah. to to experience it. So hit, hit on that. Oh, well, first off, it's pizza. I mean, what, what, what are we talking about here? It, it's not not pizza. It's definitely pizza. It's the same <laughs> ingredients as any standard pizza. Um, it's just constructed in a different way. And it basically was born out of some creativity, uh, a group of people that wanted to be different from what was already out there. And that's just the nature of the food itself. It evolves as it goes through. Like, um, you know, people will claim, oh, pizza was invented in Italy in the, the 19th century or something. Well, pizza was probably invented thousands of years prior to that uh, in Egypt with some of the first flatbreads and, and, and oils and everything. So it is a food that is constantly evolving. Um, so we'll just put it to bed here. Deep dish pizza is pizza. Uh, but I would agree with that assessment that like, you know, the locals, I, I don't think I had uh, more than maybe one or two deep dish slices in my life until I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just, it wasn't something that we, we got consistently it was really more for when you know that special occasion so um you know it's great it's super tasty i don't recommend having deep dish pizza more than once a week uh even that seems a bit much at this point um but it's a great you know little little treat when you want to splurge on something and if you if you're not eating it that often every time you go back to having a deep dish pizza you're like oh man this is so good i'm so glad I, you know i got this you know if you're having it three, four times a week, you might get a little bit sick of it at that point. But, well, and you uh, also might be 800 pounds uh, if you're having it three or four times a week as well. So maybe maybe from a health there's standpoint. There's a few more calories. Yeah. There's definitely some <laughs> yeah. more calories. Same nutrients, just a little bit more calories in deep yeah. dish pizzas. So. Uh -huh. uh, I want to go through a few of these photos uh, that you sent over, and we'll just go ahead and switch to that here. So there's obviously a, a slice of uh, deep dish. but So here, here's one of your groups, uh, I assume, uh, on your tour. And so I know that we're in just a bizarre time right now where folks aren't able to uh, gather quite the way that, that we used to and you know you and I were talking before we went on the air that hopefully you know those things will will change soon but um, so this is sort of what you do right folks get up on a on a bus and you 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 take them around town and then they get to go and sample different types and and I, I remember one thing you told me when we did a radio interview years ago is that sometimes people make the mistake of and when they get to the first stop, they, they, they eat too much. Oh, and by yeah. the time they're at the third or fourth one, they can't eat anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, it's great. So this picture that we got up right now, we're at uh, a place called uh, Macello in the, uh, the Fulton Market over by the West Loop. Um, so it's a place that, that people typically wouldn't, if you're staying at a hotel downtown, your concierge isn't sending you over to this place. It, it's, it's a hike from there. Um, it's not around the corner. And uh, it's a wood-fired pizzeria. This pizzeria in particular is inspired from the Apulia region of Italy, a southern region of Italy, where they're known for more olive oils and um, and and, uh, and olives. And it's a it's a wood-fired pizza, but it's not per se Neapolitan pizza. It's just a great change of pace pizza for what people think they're going to get on a Chicago pizza tour. Um, so one of my favorite stuffs. Now the next pizza pizzeria that we've kind of shuffled over to here, you're seeing a pizza come out of a coal fired oven. And that's actually coal burning in the background there. Uh, that's another one of our absolute favorite stops, coal fire in the West Town, Mark, uh, West Town neighborhood as well. Um, they're doing one of those pizzas where it's like they, they've borrowed parts from different styles, whether it's Italian style, Chicago bar style, East Coast, uh, you know, inspired as well. And they've kind of merged it together in this place that's really close to the United Center where the uh, the Bulls and the Blackhawks play. Uh, dynamite location, definitely out of the way for the average person, you know, visiting Chicago, uh, but one of the best pizzas in the city. So we really enjoy bringing in people there. Um, this is another shot of a, a coal-fired pizza. That, that other one was in the oven. Now that's that's out of the oven. Now, wow. So. And, and yeah. it's, it's interesting now, and, and you, you seem to be able to find this, pretty much all over where, where um, they, they have those coal fired or at least, you know, wood fired, whatever um, ovens where your pizza's ready in, you know, two minutes. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's kind of a game changer, I would think for a lot of, a lot of places. Absolutely. And it, it, it's so crazy to think how, how quickly things can change. Um, you know, I think coal fire has been around since 2007 or two, yeah, I think it was 2007. I mean, we were going there in, in 2010 with our groups and, the concept of having a, a burning oven right there in the kitchen, not in the back, not a gas oven or anything like that, and having a pizza come out that quickly was mind-blowing to guests 
for like the first five years of running the tour, we really didn't become more of a like, oh yeah, we have one of these also, you know, it's different or whatever, but um, it was really cool to, and then Coal Fire was one of those spots where, um, you know, they were, they were very gracious enough to let us go into the kitchen. So I would bring groups, I would break them up and, you know, we would take out uh, 16 to 20 people at a, at a time. So I'd break them up into like groups of seven and bring them into the kitchen and explain to them how the oven works because it's not just, oh, look, there's a really uh, hot oven with raging fire in it. There's there's a real reason the way this is this built and how the convection of it goes and the airflow and everything. And that's what makes this pizza bake this way. And it's so, you know, it's one thing to just give people good food. It's another to explain to them exactly why it's good and how it's properly prepared and what, what makes it, you know, that kind of like just peaks their mind a little bit so that they, they really, uh, by the time they're eating the food, they really enjoy it and they have a better understanding of it. I want to show a few more of these photos and I'm going to talk to you about being a pizza expert. But so yeah, here's, this looks like uh, folks are checking out how, uh, Things are sliced and diced there, and we've got we've uh, these some, the kitchen there, yeah. <laughs> some more of your your groups. And uh, this is just such a, a cool idea um, for, for folks. And I love that you said that the locals are participating as well. We, and and I, I think we find that in every city, and I know I do when I, I travel, that people sometimes have no idea what's in their own backyard. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, – that's and people love taking pictures of their uh, – of their food. Well, you hit it right on the head too with the people love taking pictures. Um, but you know, that's another thing we weren't prepared. You know, Facebook was around and popular, uh, you know, when we started. I mean, not super popular, but it was around. Um, and with all this social media that's one of people are taking this tour and their phones are out like 90% of the time just snapping pictures of, you know, their experience and they're sharing it. And uh, it's it's just, it's really good for us, for, for us to, you know, showing our brand to so many people's different streams um, because the customers are just truly enjoying themselves and, and want to show the the great styles of pizza that they have when they're in Chicago. Let me, let me ask you about just, just you as a, as a guy uh, who obviously loves pizza. So how did you kind of become the, because you know, I've, I've read about you and read some different reviews of, of the things that you've uh, done and um, and I know you know, just a little bit from a couple interviews we've done. But so how did you yeah. become a, uh, a pizza expert? You know, people will say to me, well, Bill, you have the greatest job in the world. Of course, they don't see any of the behind the scenes stuff. You probably right, have right. very similar comments. Well, oh, how did you get this job? You have the greatest job in the world. But how did you become this this pizza expert? Just eat a lot of it <laughs> right, right so to touch on a couple points there you said you have the greatest job hot you know this and what they don't see people are always like oh what was your real job before this the real job is the, the thing i always say the most of. i've never worked so hard in my life until i started doing this until i opened up my own company and decided i was going to take people out for pizza so it, this is definitely a real job um but yeah it, it comes from being in, like just this lifelong enthusiast pizza enthusiast um Pizza was a big part of my life growing up, uh, you know, with my cousins and family parties. And then my, my, my group of friends that I've, I've had since grade school, you know, that I'm still friends with and live with after college and stuff. We were always those kind of guys that just explored so many different pizzerias. I remember having a, a fantasy football draft at uh, my house um, years ago, and I had uh, my, my college friends that were staying downtown with me, and I'm like, instead, they're like, let's get pizza. And my plan was like, oh, we're getting pizza, that's for sure but I got it from like four different places. And that may have been the first pizza tour I ever did. And this is back in like 2000. I'm like, you gotta get the deep dish from here. You gotta get the tavern style from here. You gotta get the pan from here. And we, I had them all out, you know, for, for the fantasy draft. So um, it's something I, I was always really passionate about, but it wasn't until, um, you know, the job that I was in previous before this, it was a family business. And I was in the promotional products industry. And in 2008 to 2009, that's really when, um, you know, we were having a downturn in the economy and marketing budgets were completely slashed. I had these great customers. They, they ordered for me when they could, but it, it got to a point where we were having these conversations and they're saying the same, well, John, it was great talking to you. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, we laid off 10 people today. Uh, we're not buying, you know, golf balls with our logo on it. So um, it, it was kind of that moment where I was just like, okay, I've got to do something. And I, I had this crazy idea. I, I told it to my wife and uh, uh, she just, you know, she heard the idea out loud, processed it in her head and then took out the American Express card and threw it at me and said, buy that website right now. 
let's let, let's do this. Um, and it was, you know, off and running. And that was like 2009, right after, uh, you know, my, my son had been born, my first child had just been born. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do with, you know, for, for work, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that summer, you know, I, I still was trying to sell promotional products. And it was just a, it was a dead end at, at that time. Um, I, I took up a, a second job teaching tenants. Uh, for the city of Chicago, it was a city job where, you know, I'm getting paid like hourly 10, 10 or 12, I think it was like $12 an hour or so. This is not replacing what I used to make, you know, in my job. But all while I was doing that, I was planning out, you know, how we were going to run this pizza tour when we finally did launch in 2010. So the, it was in the works for a while. Um, we, we launched in 2010 and uh, it was a slow start, but, uh, you know, just like anything uh, that you work hard at, it was kind of like a snowball going down a hill. It just kept a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then one day, um, I, I think it was, if I get the numbers right, it was like we took out 800 people in the first year. And I thought, okay, that's a good start. We're, you know, it's a glorified lemonade stand at this point, but, you know, this, it's a good start. Over. And then the following month, you know, the 13th month of our business, we took out 500 people just that month so that was kind of the indicator to me that we had something going um and and that we, we could build on this and start to expand and see if we can really start taking out more groups bigger groups uh, and how we could do it all together and, and what, what also helped for us too was that this food tours they, they weren't really a thing in 2010 you know you mm. look, look at food tours now you, you can find a bunch of them in each city or well i don't know about now in this COVID era but um it was certainly in 2019 you, food tours were prevalent people knew about them um 2010 that wasn't the case so as the industry started to grow we experienced a, a little bit of a help and boom alongside that um as long as we were still working our butts off so uh that that's really you know how we got started and uh I, you know, I've, I've talked about, um, I remember in 2019, I probably talked to, with a, a dozen or so people about, you know, the starting a startup of our company and all that. I really went into details. And I, I know I thought to myself, if I had to do this again, I don't know if I could do it. It was so much work. And we had a newborn at the time. And I mean, there were nights where I'm going back and forth, uh, driving a bus up and down the Kennedy uh, that I probably wasn't even licensed to drive. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, trying to get things figured out. And I'm like, God, I, I just, I don't know if I could do it again. Well, lo and behold, here we are in 2020. I'm going to have to almost do sort of a relaunch. I, I don't anticipate it being as hard into the market as 2010 was. Uh, but we're, we're really going to be doing a full-blown restart of our company. You know, we paused for now, but we're going to restart soon, hopefully. Well, and that's what, you know, I'll just conclude this by saying pe people don't know how hard it is when you own a small business. And, um, you know, folks, who, I, I shouldn't say everyone, but, but a lot of people really have no clue. And they just, oh, look at this guy. He's got his own company. He's you know, probably a multimillionaire and he's living the, and oh, okay. you, you don't, you don't see the behind the scene. Most of these small businesses, just like yours are a, um, you know, it's, it's, you're doing something you love and, um, and there's a lot of hard work involved. So two quick things before I let you go. Uh, the first one, and this sort of flew over my head when you mentioned it earlier. Um, that's right. I forgot you are in my first travel book. It's 100 things to do in America before you yeah. die. You can't really yeah. see it over my shoulder there. It's it's on the, there you go. It's, there it is, it's there yeah. in the corner, a little product placement, but um, I put yes. the post right before I came on with the book. I, I, I memories from. Yeah. So do it. Your, yeah. Your memory is better than mine. And I wrote the damn book. What does that say about me? Sorry. Um, so, so that's good. So definitely check him out for, for that. Now, now here's now this is a serious question. So um, people are very particular with their pizza toppings, right? I will just tell you, I, I get typically uh, like pepperoni and bacon every time I go to a pizza place. I, I never change. I, it just, it's just what I do. It, it's, you know, I think we fall into a pattern. And um, That's your baseline pizza. The baseline pizza. But, but here's, here's the question. A pineapple on pizza. Is that a thing or is that should that never happen in, in the United States of America? <laughs> but it, at this spot. point, it's very, it's very clearly a thing at this point. And I've got this is this is hilarious because it's just a, it's a great debate, and people are so, you know, rooted in their in their view on that. And uh, um, I've got friends that say yes for sure, and friends that say no. It's not for me. 
Um, it's, it's just even if you pickle it, you do whatever with it, the fresh pineapple, I don't know. It's not for me. You're not going to find it on any of our Chicago pizza tours. Um, it's certainly not a, a, a pizza that would be associated with any, you know, Chicago style pizza. Um, but I, you know, I also, I kind of opened up by saying, you know, in the beginning of this, that there's no rules in pizza, right? If pizza evolves, it does what it, you know, whatever the artist can, can do with it. So um, if, if your favorite pizza in the world is a pineapple and pickle pizza or whatever, cool. That, that, that's all you, you're not going to find it on our tour. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, well, it's, 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 it's cool. I, I always appreciate, uh, getting to talk to people that have found something that they love and have found a way to turn it into a business. And so you've obviously done that. And so congratulations. I think it's fantastic. And, and I do hope that, um, that this year is not, well, better for, for everyone, but for people like you who, who work in this tourism industry where, you know, we, we need people to be back out and uh, exploring and um and so I, I do hope and pray that um that you're able to pick things back up uh in the next few months here um because yeah you do a you have a, a great idea and um and i hope people take advantage of it so your website chicago pizza tours.com is that right that's correct absolutely okay chicago pizza tours.com and if you don't follow him on um instagram i would well, I'd recommend it, but 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 don't flip through like around lunchtime. I and yeah, I thought that John, I know we we don't know each other that well, but I honestly I thought this is not a joke. I thought you were gonna, you know, maybe send over a frozen deep dish pizza for me to enjoy during our, our interview, but but that never came. But the mail is kind of slow right now, so maybe it maybe it'll be around St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah, very very cool. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just teasing. But uh, well, great. It was great catching up with you, man. Uh, good luck. Keep in touch. Keep uh, sharing those photos. And ChicagoPizzaTours.com is, is the website. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. It's great. Yeah, to talk it's to you. Uh, my pleasure. He's a nice guy, Jonathan Porter, Chicago Pizza Tours. If you have not um, already checked out their website uh, during this interview, um, do so now. And uh, and once they're able to start booking, uh, if you're in, so I'm in the St. Louis, Missouri uh, area. Um, it's a you know easy road trip from St. Louis, but Chicago obviously nestled in the middle of America. So pretty much anywhere you're traveling, you could you could stop in and uh, for a couple of days enjoy Chicago and and take one of those tours. I think you'd you'd really enjoy that. So uh, that is the end of our episode here. If you would like to uh, subscribe wherever you happen to be watching this, whether it's YouTube or Rumble. Uh, Facebook, whatever. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the uh, upcoming interviews. Lots of great stories, just like Jonathan, uh, highlighting people who are doing interesting uh, and cool things all over the United States. We'll be talking to people just like him uh, in the coming weeks throughout the year. So make sure you uh, subscribe and always follow along. Uh, you can go to BillOnTheRoad.com if you would like some uh, great travel uh, information, road trip ideas, that sort of thing. And then, of course, uh, we mentioned the book, 100 Things to Do in America Before You Die. Jonathan and uh, Chicago Pizza Tours are featured in that. Um, but you can pick up any of these uh, travel guides at the uh, store at BillOnTheRoad.com. Help support Bill on the Road and uh, uh, keep us in business here. Keep us uh, being able to stream and all that uh, good stuff. So that is all the time we have. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll talk to you next time. Have a good day. See ya.